When the Toronto Maple Leafs drafted Rasmus Sandin back in the 2018 draft, it was seen as a pretty big deal. This was a Sioux Greyhounds defenseman. He was from Sweden, and he was really good offensively. He immediately made his way into the AHL, and a lot of Maple Leafs fans got excited because of what he was able to do there. 28 points, 44 games played. Rasmus Sandin had offensive NHL defenseman potential, and it was evident right from the start. This was a player that, in the eyes of many Leafs fans, was going to solidify their offense from that blue line. Sure, he was only 5'11", but this was a player that had really good edge work, he had some nice mobility, and he could control the blue line fairly well. And as his time in Toronto continued, he maxed out getting 20 points in 52 games played this prior year. And even though that's technically an improvement from the previous years he has had, Rasmus Sandin unfortunately got passed up on the depth chart and eventually requested a trade out of Toronto. Looking for a new opportunity, Sandin got sent over to the Capitals. He had 15 points in 19 games played, which, if you do the math, is really gosh darn good. Multiply that out by 82, that's a 65-point pace in the sample he had with the Washington Capitals. On a team that already boasts names like John Carlson, it's really great to see Sandin be able to get that offensive touch to his game and really showcase at the top league in the world that he can do what he needs to do. It's just, with Toronto, he was never able to unlock that. Now, when it comes to Sandin actually being this good, I don't know if many Leafs fans are all too surprised. We all kind of acknowledged that there was a good skill set here. He just got passed up on the depth chart. He wasn't really put in those positions to give the Maple Leafs that type of an offensive output. And as a result, when Rasmus Sandin was traded away, you saw a lot of fans saying, oh man, well, darn it, at least I hope we get something good. And what I wanted to do in this video was go over that return. Because if you head over to the actual trade itself, Rasmus Sandin was sent over to the Caps for defenseman Eric Gustafson and a first round pick. Now, Gustafson, we'll have to talk about him a little bit here. He had 38 points in 61 games played with the Caps when he got sent over. He actually was a former 60 point defender in the NHL, achieving that with the Blackhawks in 2019. Nowadays, he's not really a shade of that similar profile, but he still has some offensive talent. He still has the capabilities of running a blue line on the power play, and that's kind of what the Leafs brought him in to be able to do. Now, to his credit, he had four points in nine games and one goal in two games in the postseason, so he did his job, but Gustafson expired as a UFA and eventually signed with the Rangers this offseason, so he's no longer in Toronto. They got 11 games out of this guy. That's it. Meanwhile, if you go to that first round pick, you take a look at the 28th overall selection, which was initially Boston's, but it was sent over to Washington in the Craig smith Dmitry Orlov three-way trade back in February. This was 28th overall, and the Maple Leafs used this draft pick to select Easton Cowan out of the London Knights in the OHL. Now, we made our video talking about Easton Cowan when he was drafted, and the response in the comments and the chat it was pretty divided, to say the least. This was a player who was drafted 28th, but his rankings varied all over based off of who you asked. He was ranked 66th by Elite Prospects, 118th by Future Considerations. McKean's had him at 78, McKenzie had him at 53. Only Craig Button had this guy even sniffing the first round, as he was ranked 34th on Button's board. So, this was a player that, for all intents and purposes, at 28th overall you could say the Maple Leafs reached on. And we talked about this in the video, but we'll read the scouting report on Elite Prospects once more. Easton Cowan is a highly intelligent and creative forward. He creates opportunities by outspeeding and outdangling the opposition. Cowan's hockey sense matches the quickness in his feet, and he's able to link passing plays in transition, manipulate defensive gaps with clever movement and feints, and find pockets of space in the slot. He was under a point per game this season in the OHL, with 53 points and 68, but he was over a point per game in the playoffs, so he really did come to show up when the games mattered the most. He plays with a lot of grit, he plays with a lot of intensity, and that's why Brad Trilliving, or should I say Trilliving? I mean, Dubas was with Toronto for the entire season, and that's kind of when the majority of the scouting takes place, so... I don't know, we'll just say the Leafs for now. This is what the Leafs saw value in. The competitive nature, the sandpaper, the grit, and they valued it so much that this was a guy they took at 28th. But, 
when you think about where he was supposed to go and how the Maple Leafs ended up with this pick in the first place, you can understand why a few people are going out there and sort of pointing it out saying, yeah, wait a minute, what the hell was this? You traded away Rasmus Sandin, a guy who was a premier top four to be defenseman who could run a power play and who scored at a 60 point pace with the Capitals in a small sample for a guy that was supposed to be drafted in the second to third round? Sure, Gustafson was there. Sure, the first round draft pick is a first round draft pick. You technically traded away Sandin, who was a first himself, for another first, but you use that first to take a third round type of guy? And this is where the concerns are starting to come in. Now, I'm not going to go out there and say that Easton Cowan is going to have this amazing career and he's going to prove to everybody why he should have been a top round pick. Who knows how prospects' careers are going to go? Who knows how Sandine is going to go, too? Easton Cowan, for all I care, could become the best player out of this draft in a few years. Okay, that's not going to happen. Connor Bedard is Connor Bedard. But maybe in some world, Easton Cowan really bolsters up his offense. He brings that sandpaper, that grit to the middle to top six of Toronto when he eventually makes the team and when Tavares is eventually gone. Maybe that happens. But just from the optics of how everything looks today in 2023 July, it doesn't necessarily translate to the best value possible. When you consider how good Sandine was for the Caps, how good a lot of Leafs fans thought Sandine was going to be able to become, and what you inevitably turned this player into. A first round pick that you took a second to third round caliber guy with, and 11 games of Eric Gustafson. It doesn't look great. And in order for this to actually look great down the line, we're going to need a few things to happen. Firstly, whatever happens with Sandine in Washington is going to happen with Sandine in Washington. If he goes out there and has a 60-point year next year, great. If he goes out there and has a 30-point year next year, great. At least it'll be a career high. So for Rasmus Sandine, things are really looking up for him, honestly. Like, considering how many assists he was able to rack up, this is mostly what we knew Sandine was capable of doing when he was a Sioux Greyhound in Toronto Marley. But if he's able to take that to the next level, then I don't think anybody would necessarily be too surprised. It's just, for Easton Cowan, this guy's got to find a way to really bolster that value and prove that not only was this stint in the postseason a flash in the pan, but it will be the shining spotlight for his entire game next year. The London Knights need to be able to allow themselves to rely on Cowan more, so much to the point that he's able to get those tougher minutes. He's able to produce more. He was the fifth most productive player on his team this previous season, and some of these guys, not all of them, but some of them, are indeed going to leave because they're already too old for the OHL. So for Easton Cowan, a lot of the value of this Rasmus Sandin trade rests on his shoulders. I'm not going to go out there and guarantee or deny a great career for Cowan in the future, but I'm just pointing it out right here. You got traded for Rasmus Sandin, a player whom a lot of Leafs fans believed in, and a player whom a lot of Capitals fans are super excited to see suit up for their team in 23-24. So for Easton Cowan, I don't want to say it, but the pressure's kind of on here. Rankings, schmankings, who cares if you are ranked to go in the third? The fact is, this is a first-round caliber guy now, and he's going to have to go out there in the OHL and prove it for 23-24. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about Easton Cowan and the way he was traded for Rasmus Sandin by proxy. Thoughts about Eric Gustafson leaving the Leafs in the 11-game sample they got out of him. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about Sandin as well. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishar Shrolls 99, and bye.